Welcome to another episode of How to Make Your Wedding Not Suck. My name is Dan, and I'm here today with Len Brown from Tuxedos by Collars and Cuffs. So, Len, thanks so much for being here. I'm really excited to have you on the show. People don't pay enough attention sometimes to what they're wearing. They're, I see every part of the day that I'm interacting with people. They're, you know, we're taking pictures of them, and they're, they're trying their best to look good. Um, but tell us, from, from your vantage point in the industry, like what is one of the biggest mistakes that, that brides and grooms make when uh, they're, they're picking out the clothes that they're going to be wearing throughout the entire day? Well, first, thank you for having me on the show. Of course, it's great to have you here. Yeah. Uh, it, um, it seems today that uh, the tuxedos seem to always take a backseat. Average wedding, it's always featured. It seems like they, you know, they, the, the venue, mm -hmm. then it's the dress, then it's uh, the photographer. Right. Well, the tuxedos, it just seems they always get neglected. Mm. Sometimes the bride, when they're out shopping for the uh, bridal gowns, mm -hmm. the bridesmaids, they're always worrying about the color and the style and this and that. Mm -hmm. They'll pick out colors that, uh, uh, colors that I don't like to work with. Mm -hmm. yeah. they'll, they'll come to me and want to wear a black tuxedo, but then they'll tell me that they, uh, the bridesmaid's gowns are a navy blue. A navy blue, yeah, that's a problem. <laughs> navy blue doesn't work well right. with a black tuxedo. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the pictures mm -hmm. and uh, if, with the right color combinations, you know, the, the men can really pop. Yeah. And that's usually what we're looking for. Yeah. Though uh, another color that's really tough to work with, again, if they want a black tuxedo and they'll pick out a color like a, a lapis mm -hmm. or an eggplant. Okay, yeah. And just kind of blah. Right. If you want to work with a gray tuxedo, that, mm -hmm. that, that, that would be good. But, uh, so that's just something that we encounter a lot. Yeah, I think that's, that's so true. Because, uh, guys, it seems like girls get to wear these exotic uh, dresses sometimes. There's so much energy spent picking out this beautiful dress and colors and then guys are just like, Oh, we'll just throw you in the same old, same old thing sometimes, you know. Um, if, have you seen ways where guys, they really want to stand out and not just be, uh, you know, the guys that just are just like, yeah, the stereotypical, we have to have a guy stand on the other side. But is there a way to really make guys look, look good, like really be like a, a, an attention piece in the wedding by what they're wearing? To answer the question, yes. I see mm -hmm. a lot of men today, a lot of your young professionals, mm -hmm. <clears throat> They're very aware of style and fashion. Mm -hmm. They they want that trim fit look. Mm -hmm. They want the skinny pants. Right. They uh, uh, they know what they want. Yeah. And uh, that's the type of uh, you know groom and and groomsmen I love working with. Mm -hmm. It uh, it's one thing when someone takes an interest in his wedding and uh, and uh, you know wants to look good. Yeah. And when I find that type of person, it's a pleasure to work with. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about like time frame, like when in that wedding planning process should people reach out uh, to their, you know, their tuxedo provider to find out, uh, line that stuff up. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. we're, we're trying to change that right okay. now. Our, our, uh, it's always been, the tuxedos have been the last thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're talking 90 days before the wedding, mm -hmm. you know, the groom will get his groomsmen together and they'll, they'll go to the mall and, mm -hmm spend the day and pick right. out tuxedos. Yeah. Uh, what we're trying to do, what I like to do is change that mm -hmm. and get the tuxedos in the beginning of the cycle. Okay. And again, right after the bride goes out with the bridesmaids and, and, and picks out that dress, mm -hmm. there's no reason why they if, they, if they're going to wear tuxedos, then go out and book the tuxedos. Yeah. If it's on that list of things to do, then get it done. Yeah, just get um, it done. From a vendor's point of view, I respect the groom a lot more that's coming to me a year out before mm -hmm. his wedding. Yeah. This is a man that I think, in my mind, knows what he's doing mm -hmm. and uh, wants to plan for his wedding. Right. Now, does it give them uh, a little bit less flexibility of, of options and, and things that they can do if, you, if you're kind of crunched for time to deliver that, that service? Yes, sure. Yeah. Now, you know, in the spring, mm -hmm. When you have April uh, weddings in April, May, June, mm -hmm. there's a big thing that the, uh, that the groom doesn't think about, and it's called a prom, mm. prom season. <laughs> yeah. And it's very big. Yeah. And, and sometimes, you know, it, it'll, there'll be a uh, shortage of a, of, of, of a, of a tuxedo, mm -hmm. maybe something new that's uh, in, in high demand. Mm -hmm. 
we might not be able to accommodate his entire bridal party with that product. Right, yeah. So this way, a year out, if that groom books that wedding, those tuxedos are reserved for his men and <laughs> guaranteed uh, he'll, he'll be able to um, get whatever he's picking out. That's a great point. Now, we've talked about the bridal party and then obviously the bride and groom uh, or the groom himself, but uh, what about the parents of the bride and groom? What do you, any suggestions on what they should be expected to wear at a wedding? Yes, the uh, tradition or, or the etiquette for the parents is the, they don't recommend that the parents associate with the uh, bridal party in style or color. Okay. You know, that's a special day for your parents. You're, you're honoring your parents that day. Yeah. You, uh, you, you want to, um, you just want them to look elegant. Mm -hmm. You don't want somebody to be visiting your home six months after the wedding and you have your photo album sitting on the coffee table and they start fanning through it mm -hmm. and somebody mistakes your father for a groomsman. Now, a big part of what we've talked about on this show so far has been really about experience. And I think the, the, the client experience matters. It just matters. Uh, and so with something like a tuxedo, which can be perceived as, as just a, a product, um, that they could get at just a big box store because they have, you know, for a few bucks less or something. Tell me a little bit about um, what kind of experience you provide to not just the bride and groom, but also the, the bridal party, the, the, the groomsmen um, that kind of uh, continues along after, after that wedding, the next day after the wedding. Uh, we are family owned business. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> We're in Wilmington uh, for 20 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, about six years ago, we, got tired of losing business to the large big box stores. Mm -hmm. And we would only lose the business to them because it would, they were conveniently located across the country. Mm -hmm. And second would be price. Mm -hmm. So we had to come up with something. We had to come up with a way to uh, be able to provide a service to the groom, mm -hmm. bride and groom, that, that the uh, large box stores couldn't do. Just couldn't do yeah. And we came up with uh, something called a tuxedo fitting party. Mm. And it's taken off really well. Mm. When we sit down and when I sit down with the bride and groom and, and, and really speak to the bride, they, 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 they plan these weddings for over a year. Mm. Usually it's just the bride and her mother doing mm. all the work. They always uh, are trying to show all their friends and family and relatives a good time, and, mm -hmm. and it's really not easy. Mm -hmm. It's usually a very uh, one of the most expensive parties they ever throw in their life. <laughs> That's the truth. So a lot goes into this uh, this wedding, all for a uh, rehearsal dinner, mm -hmm. and then the next day is the main event, mm -hmm. and that's kind of um, that's just the way it is. Yeah. So what we do is we offer the groom to throw a uh, tuxedo fitting party. Okay. Maybe about six months before the wedding date. And now this is a, uh, it's kind of like a uh, pep rally for the mm -hmm. wedding. Yeah. We also encourage him to invite the bridesmaids, mm -hmm. invite the parents, and invite everybody that's going to be at the wedding. <laughs> yeah. Um, again, the bridal party's never together till the night before. Right. And it just seems like a waste. So at a party like this, it's hosted at their own house or wherever they would do this, and then uh, do you come out and, and take measurements? or Yes, or what I do is I coordinate the party for the, uh, for the groom. Okay. And uh, Friday nights are popular. Mm -hmm. We do a six o'clock start. Okay. And we'll come out, we'll, we'll measure everyone. Mm -hmm. We'll take a deposit. And usually we have something to eat, something to drink, mm -hmm. and then we get out of there. Yeah. And, and it's really good for me because without that information, the groom hires me, but I really can't do any work for him. Yeah. Um, I'm sitting there, I'm waiting for his men to come to the shop and, <laughs> right, yeah. and they're not coming and the bride's calling me and saying, you know, did Danny get measured yet? And did Billy get in there yet? Right. And she's getting all stressed out. Um, so this way, it's, it's, it's good for me. I've, I've got all the information I need and it's good for the bride and groom because they have peace of mind. It, mm. The men have been fitted and one less thing to worry about. Yeah, that's so true. I, I see that all the time. Uh, I remember I was a groomsman at a wedding once, and it was like, uh, it was such a drag to have to go, uh, you know, get measured, and it was this thing I kept putting off. But yeah, if somebody had been like, hey, come over Friday, we're all going to hang out, have a couple drinks, you know, get some food, like, I would definitely go to that. And it, uh, it kind of kills two birds with one stone. You get that camaraderie before the wedding, 
and you also get a very practical element um, completed, checked off your list, uh, without having to set up a, an errand for people to, you know, to go do. So that's a great idea. Um, now, after the wedding, I remember once uh, I was in charge of um, being given all the tuxedos, and I had to go around and knock on people's doors, and they're still sleeping at one in the afternoon, you know, because it was a crazy night. And I had to get all these sweaty tuxedos and bring them back to the place. And it was this big, like, it, it interrupted the, the, the day after experience as a, as a groomsman. So what's something that you found that works really well after the wedding to kind of take that away from people? Well, you're right, and, and, and what you're referring to years ago, that was uh, one of the jobs of the, uh, the best man. Mm -hmm. So what we do now today is we offer the groom a pickup service. Mm -hmm. A lot of times there'll be the bridal party, you'll get a block of rooms in a local hotel, mm -hmm. and the uh, groomsmen can get up with the bride and groom the morning after. Mm -hmm. They can come down, they can have breakfast with the bride and groom, and uh, after that, when they check out, they want to go home. Yeah. Okay, they've been away from the home mm -hmm. overnight. They've been away from their dog, away from their kids. Mm -hmm. They just want to go home. Right. They don't want to go stop at the mall, pick up, and drop off their tuxedo. <laughs> right, exactly. And uh, we offer a pickup service. They mm -hmm. can check out of the hotel. We make arrangements with the front desk. Mm -hmm. They'll uh, leave the tuxedo they in the garment leave them bag. There right at the front desk. And uh, yeah. we'll send somebody by, pick it up later on. That's awesome. So it is a nice service, and it's a nice service if any of the groomsmen are, uh, you know, they're in town, or they're, they, they, they might live in California right. or Florida, mm -hmm. and, and they're really just, that morning, they want to get up and, you know, they're, they're, they want to go to the airport, mm -hmm. or they want to get in a car and drive. Yeah. So it, uh, again, we try to bring service uh, to this uh, industry, which mm -hmm. just seems, it seems to be lacking. Yeah. Anything that makes that wedding day go smoother and, and easier and, oh. and fun rather than just work that needs to be done, that's, that's a great way. So kudos to you for uh, finding innovative ways to make that happen. So well, thank that's you. Awesome. But, uh, so Len, thank you so much for coming on the show. It was great, great having you today. And, uh, I so, really enjoyed yeah, it. Really good tips. So Len, thanks so much for coming on the show. It was great to have you. So uh, if you'd like to find out more about Len and his business, Collars and Cuffs, just check out his website at collarsandcuffsonline.com. And of course, be sure to check out our full library of wedding tips on how to make your wedding not suck by going to dazzlephotography.com tips. Thanks so much, and we'll see you soon.